In the last lesson, we examined the technique of plugging in numbers when the quantities include variables. In this lesson, we'll examine a useful strategy that can increase the effectiveness of the plugging in numbers approach. To set this up, please consider the following question. Now when it comes to plugging in numbers, I suggested in the last lesson that these numbers represent a nice cross-section of values and they're relatively easy to plug in. However, this does not necessarily mean that these are the only numbers you should consider. More importantly, even if you do choose numbers from this set, which ones should you plug in first? Well, before we plug in any numbers, it's always useful to ask the question, is there a value for the variable that makes the two quantities equal? You'll see in a moment why this is a useful question to ask. Now notice that when we examine the question here, we see that both expressions have a constant term of negative 7, and the remaining terms all have x's in them. So we can make all of these terms evaluate to be 0 if we let x equal 0. If x equals 0, then we'll plug 0 into the two quantities and then evaluate them to get the following. So when x equals 0, the two quantities are equal. At this point, it must be the case that either the two quantities are always equal for every value of x, or the two quantities are not always equal. So if we choose some other number at random and plug it in, and the two quantities are still equal, then there's a good chance that the two quantities will be equal for all values of x, which means the answer will be c. Conversely, if we plug in another number and the two quantities are not equal, then the answer must be d. So what number should we plug in next? Well, if we plug in 1, we get the following, and when we evaluate each quantity, we get negative 6 and 2, in which case quantity b is greater than quantity a. So since we get two conflicting results here, the answer must be d. The relationship cannot be determined from the given information. Alright, now that you understand the strategy, you might want to pause the video and try this next question before continuing. Alright, once again, since we have variables in the quantities, one approach is to consider plugging in numbers. If we go with that approach, it's a good idea to ask, is there a value for the variable that makes the two quantities equal? Well, notice that both quantities consist of products of binomials, and both of them feature the binomial x minus 7. So if we let x equal 7 and plug 7 into both quantities, something nice happens. Both of these binomials evaluate to be 0, and any product that includes 0 must evaluate to be 0. So great, we've quickly shown that the two quantities can be equal, which means the correct answer here must be either C or D. At this point, we need to plug in another value. What would be a nice value to plug in here? Well, for this question, plugging in one of these numbers would take a lot of time. On the other hand, if we plug in 16, the two quantities are very easy to evaluate. In quantity A, notice that this binomial evaluates to be zero, and any product that includes zero must evaluate to be zero. Now in quantity B, none of these binomials evaluate to be zero, so we can be certain that their product does not evaluate to be zero. Notice that we don't need to find the actual value of quantity B here. Since we already found one case in which the two quantities are equal, all we need to do now is find a case in which the two quantities are not equal, and we can then be certain that the correct answer is D. Okay, let's summarize. In this lesson we learned that if you decide to plug numbers into quantities involving variables, you should ask the following question. Doing so can save you a lot of time on test day. Up to this point in the module, we've examined some systematic approaches to consider when answering quantitative comparison questions. In this lesson, we'll examine a strategy that can sometimes be the fastest and easiest approach. We'll call it the number sense approach. To set things up, please consider the following question. In fact, you may wish to pause the video now and try answering it before continuing. Okay, one option here is to plug in values for x. But as we discussed in a previous lesson, this approach has some limitations. The biggest drawback is that without two contradictory results, you cannot be certain of the correct answer. 
Another option here is to perform maturing operations on both quantities with the goal of simplifying the quantities so that they're easier to compare. Let's try that. Remember that we can use any combination of these acceptable operations. So to begin, let's get rid of the fractions by multiplying both quantities by 10. Now if you're uncertain why we should multiply both quantities by 10 here, don't worry. We'll cover that concept later on in the Algebra and Equation Solving module. For the time being, just know that multiplying both quantities by 10 will successfully eliminate the fractions as follows. From here, let's try to get the variables on one side and the non-variables on the other side. To do this, we can add 5x to both quantities to get this. Then we can add 12 to both quantities to get this. And finally, if we divide both quantities by 9, we're left with an x in quantity A, and then quantity B we're left with 22 over 9, which we can rewrite as 2 and 4 ninths. So which quantity is bigger here? Well, since we're told that x is greater than 3, we can be certain that x is greater than 2 and 4 ninths, which means the correct answer here is A. Now, while this approach allowed us to arrive at the correct answer, we could have solved this question in a matter of seconds had we used a bit of number sense. First, notice that in the numerator of quantity A, we have 2x minus 6. Now, since we're told that x is greater than 3, we know that 2 times x must be greater than 6. And if 2 times x is greater than 6, then it must be the case that 2x minus 6 is a positive number. As you'll soon see, we don't need to be any more precise than this. Now let's move over to the numerator in quantity b. Here we can see that if x is greater than 3, then 2 minus x must be equal to some negative value. From here, we can see that in quantity A, we have a positive number divided by 5, which will always be positive. And in quantity B, we have a negative number divided by a positive number, which will always be negative. Now, since a positive number is always greater than a negative number, the answer here is A. So as you can see, by applying a bit of number sense, we can sometimes arrive at the answer in a matter of seconds. All right, let's try another one. Try pausing the video and see if you can solve this one in your head. Okay, to answer this question, I'm going to apply a technique I like to call the something method. You will see more of this technique later on in the Algebra and Equation Solving module. Here's how the technique works. First, notice that in the given equation, we see that 24y divided by this is equal to 6. Now, if we totally block out the denominator here, we can see that we have 24y divided by something equals 6. Well, if 24y divided by something equals 6, then that something must equal 4y. In other words, the denominator, 5y minus x, must equal 4y. So we can take the denominator and set it equal to 4y. At this point, notice that we have 5y minus something equals 4y. Well, if 5y minus something equals 4y, then that something must equal y. In other words, x here must equal y. Now that we've shown that x equals y, we can see that quantity A and quantity B must be equal, which means the correct answer here is C. Okay, that concludes this lesson. Let's summarize. In this lesson, we learned that some quantitative comparison questions can be solved quickly by applying a little bit of number sense. Up to this point in the module, we've examined several strategies to consider when answering quantitative comparison questions. In this lesson, we'll examine a few more tips to consider. The first tip is avoid making unnecessary computations. Remember, your only task in a quantitative comparison question is to determine the relationship between the two quantities. So in many cases, you need not actually evaluate each quantity. For example, in this question, we need only recognize that since we have a negative number raised to an odd power in quantity A, the result must be a negative number. And since we have a negative number raised to an even power in quantity b, the result here must be a positive number. Since a positive number is always greater than a negative number, the correct answer is b. 
Notice that we were able to reach this conclusion without performing any lengthy calculations. Okay, the next tip to consider is do not select answer choice D if the comparison does not contain any unknown values. For example, in this question we can see that both quantities must evaluate to be specific numbers. Now answer choice D says that the relationship cannot be determined from the given information. Well, if the two quantities can be evaluated, then they can definitely be compared. So if you don't know how to solve this question and are forced to guess, then we can be certain that the answer is not D. All right, the next tip is this. When it comes to geometry questions, remember that the figures are not necessarily drawn to scale unless there's a statement saying that they are drawn to scale. So for example, in this question, we cannot conclude that since angle X looks bigger than angle Y, then it must be bigger. Instead, we must apply rules of geometry to determine the relationship between the two angles. In fact, if you do apply the rules of geometry, you will find the answer here is B. Okay, the last tip to consider is this. Pay very close attention to the shared information in the middle of the two quantities. Here you'll often find key information about the quantities and neglecting to factor in this information can easily cause you to make incorrect conclusions about the two quantities. Okay, so these are some additional tips to consider when tackling quantitative comparison questions. As you work your way through our course, be sure to revisit this module to remind yourself of all of the strategies you learned here.